Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. This lesson's on graphing rational functions. And I suppose one of the first things we need to make sure of is that you know what a rational function is. Maybe this will help. What did pi and the square root of negative 1 say to each other? Well, pi said to the square root of negative 1, get real. Now, if you can figure out why he said that, send me an email and I'll let you know if you got it right. But the second half of this I'm going to explain to you. What did the square root of negative 1 say to pi? Well, he said, be rational. Now, why did he say that to pi? He said that to pi because pi is not a rational number. Pi is a decimal that goes on forever. Pi cannot be written as a fraction. Pi is not rational. But today we're going to talk about rational functions. And those are functions that can be written or need to be written or are written as fractions. We're also going to understand before this is over what the parent rational function is, what a hyperbola is, what are the branches of a hyperbola, and what are the asymptotes of a hyperbola. So a rational function is a function that can be written as a ratio or a fraction. And x is going to be in the denominator of this fraction. The generic form is y equals a over x minus h plus k. Don't worry, before this lesson's over, you'll understand what all those letters mean and how they impact the graph. The parent rational function is a simplified version of the, the generic rational function above. It's just y equals 1 over x. When we graph it, it looks like that. That's an inverse variation, isn't it? Now you'll see there's some similarities and differences between the parent and the rational and the generic rational function. For one, in the parent rational function, the coefficient of x is 1. But it doesn't have to be. It could be 2 or 3 or 5 or negative 6. And if we're anything other than 1, it would impact the graph of the parent rational function. You'll also notice that in the parent rational function, there's no h value. But if there were, that would impact how the equation graphed. There's also no k value. And yeah, that would impact how the, the equation graphed too. And the a value is 1. But if a were something other than 1, the function would graph differently from the parent rational function. Let's get some vocabulary out of the way. The first vocabulary you need to know is a hyperbola. And a hyperbola is just this cute little curve that we're showing uh, over here. It has two parts. And those parts we call the branches of the hyperbola. And you'll notice that these branches approach, in this case, the x-axis and the y-axis, and they get closer and closer to those axes, but they never touch it. x is never equal to 0. y is never equal to 0 in the parent function. And those lines, in this case the axis of the uh, graph, that the curve approaches but never touches, are known as the asymptotes of the hyperbola. Let's look at how changes in the parent function would impact the graph. And first, let's look at the coefficient of x. In the parent function, the coefficient of x is 1. But what if the coefficient of x were 3? 
What if y equaled 1 over 3x? How would that change the graph? Well, we could create a table of x values and y values. And when we did, we'd notice a couple of things. We'd notice that in the parent function, when x equaled 1, y equaled 1. But in our new function, when x equals 1, y equals 0.333, or 1 third. We've divided our y value in the parent function by 3. It's 1 third of its previous value. Now, how's that going to change the graph? Think about it. In the parent function, when x equaled 5, y equaled 0.2. But in our new function, when x equals 5, y is only going to be one-third of 0.2. It's going to be 0.0667. It's going to be much closer to the x-axis. And when we graph this new function, you'll see that all the lines are closer to the x and the y axis. We've shrunk this function down. We've made it so it's closer to the origin. We've given it vertical shrink. Now let's look at the a value and see how changes in the a value would impact the parent graph. Let's say that instead of y equals 1 over x, we had y equals minus 3 over x. Well, let's create a table and graph it and see what changes we can discover. First thing I see is that in the parent graph, our curves are in the first and the third quadrants. But in this new graph, our curves are in the second and the fourth quadrant. We've reflected our graph around the y-axis. That negative 1, that negative sign right there, made all our values negative or the opposite of what they were in the parent. I can also see that my values have been changed. When x equaled 1 in the parent, y equaled 1. But in this new function, when x equals 1, y equals minus 3. I've multiplied that y value by minus 3. Well, that negative sign is going to reflect the curves around the y-axis. And that 3 is going to stretch the y values away from the origin. It's going to create vertical stretch. Let's look at this k value. In the parent function, the k value is 0. But what if the k value was 2? What if the equation was y equals 1 over x plus 2? How would that change the graph? Well, it's pretty obvious. Every y value would be 2 units greater than it was in the parent function. In the parent function, when x equaled 5, y equaled 0.2. But in this new function, when x equals 5, y is going to be 2.2. It's going to be a bigger number. And that's going to happen with every y value. Every y value is going to be 2 greater than it was before in the parent function. That whole curve is going to be raised by 2 units. In the parent function, the asymptotes are the x-axis and the y-axis. But in this new function, the asymptotes are the y-axis and the line at y equals 2. That's always going to be true. The equation for the horizontal asymptote will always be y equals k. All right, we've only got one left, that h. What do changes in h do to the graph? In the parent function, h is 0. y equals 1 over x minus is nothing, minus 0. But what if the equation was y equals 1 over x minus 3? How would the graph be changed? Well, this is a little less intuitive than all the others. 
But if we create a table and we graph it, you're going to see something real interesting. Our vertical asymptote has been moved three units to the right. Our h equals three. It's x minus h, and over here it's x minus three. So our h value is three, not negative three, positive three. And our vertical asymptote is positive 3. And that'll always be the case. That h value will slide our graph to the right or to the left. And our, our uh, vertical asymptote will always be x equals h. Well, now let's summarize what we've learned. Let's talk about what changes in each of these values, each of these letters in the generic equation creates to the graph relative to the graph of the parent equation. The parent function is y equals 1 over x. But if we make changes in that y equals 1 over x, it's going to impact the graph. If we change the coefficient of x, it's going to change the graph. It's going to create vertical shrink. It's going to bring that graph closer to the origin. If we make changes in our a value, it's going to create vertical stretch. It's going to pull the, the, the graph away from the origin. And if our a value is negative, then it's going to reflect the curve around the y-axis. How about changes in K? Well, they move the horizontal asymptote either up or down. If K is positive, that's going to raise the asymptote up to the K value. If K is negative, it's going to drop the asymptote. How about the H value? Well, changes in the H value moves the vertical asymptote either left or right. Well, let's draw a graph of a rational function. Let's use this one. y equals 3 over x plus 1 plus 4. The first thing I want to do is draw on my asymptotes. I know that my horizontal asymptote is y equals k. My k value is positive 4. So my vertical, or excuse me, my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 4, and I'll draw that. Now let's draw the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is the h value, and in the generic equ equation it's x minus h. In our actual equation it's x plus 1, so h equals negative 1. And our ver vertical asymptote is at x equals minus 1. Well now I want to create a table of values so I can plot some points and then draw a curve. Now I'm going to pick values that are relative to those asymptotes. I picked x values of minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and a half, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I calculated the y values and then I drew the dots on the graph and then I drew some curves that connected those dots and looked like a hyperbola and I'm done now you try this one hit the pause button do the problem and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer Okay, let's graph this. And the first thing we want to do is put in our asymptotes. My horizontal asymptote is defined by the k value, y equals k. My k is minus 2.5, so I'll put a line at y equals minus 2.5. My vertical asymptote is x equals h, and my h is 2. So I'll draw a line at h, or excuse me, at x equals 2. 
Now I'm going to pick some values for x and calculate what y values result. And I want to pick x values that are kind of close to the intersection of my two asymptotes. So I picked some values, minus 2, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3 and 4. And I calculated the y values that resulted. And then I plotted those points. Now you'll notice that I am not primarily in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. I've got a negative a value, so I've reflected around the y-axis. Now I'll draw a line between those points, and I'll have drawn the graph for y equals minus 1 over x minus 2 minus 2 and a half. Try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key. Well, I want to put some asymptotes in first. And my horizontal asymptote is defined by k, y equals k. But my k value is 0. I'm not subtracting something from the fraction with x in it. So my horizontal asymptote will just be the x-axis. And I'll draw a line there. My vertical asymptote, though, is x equals h. And my h value is 1. So I'll draw another line representing my vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Now I'll pick some values of x that are relative to the intersection of those two asymptotes and calculate what the y values are. I'll plot those points on the curve or on the graph and then I'll draw curves between them. And that is the graph of the rational function y equals 3 over x minus 1. Well, that's our lesson on graphing rational functions. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and try the worksheets and quizzes you find there. Well, I hope you learned a lot. Hope you had a good time. And I hope we see you again real soon.